One of the most powerful apps you can get for your Mac, your iPhone, or iPad is already built into your device and it's completely free. It's called Spotlight. Not only can it show you movie times and flight tracking information and even weather at a location on a certain day, but convert currency, run shortcuts, search for specific kinds of files on your Mac, and you can also customize it to show you the suggestions and search results you want and hide the ones you don't. So here's 18 tips for Spotlight on Mac OS and your iPhone. Tip number one is contacts. If you search for a contact on macOS Sonoma, you'll actually get quick actions to FaceTime, message, call, and email that contact right here from Spotlight. And the same is true on your iPhone. Just search for a contact and you have quick access to reach them right there. Number two, you can actually search for settings like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi from Spotlight. And here in macOS Sonoma, you can actually toggle these things on or off right here from Spotlight. You can even search for things like wallpapers and jump right to that setting screen in system settings. On iPhone and iPad, you can still search for settings like Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. You can't toggle them right here in the search results, but you can jump to that setting right there from your search. Number three, you can actually do calculations in Spotlight. You can do things like addition and multiplication right here, just doing two numbers with an asterisk in the middle and it will multiply them. And you can do addition and subtraction right there. This also works on iPhone and iPad. Just do a number times a number, and you can get the answer right here in Spotlight without even going to the calculator app. Number four, you can get flight tracking information right in Spotlight without going to a website or opening an app. Here on the Mac, if I search for DL1044, which is the Delta flight, you'll see that information is right here. I can click it and I'll actually see the flight path, all the flight information right here in Spotlight. Don't even have to go to a website. And this also works on your iPhone and iPad. If you go to Spotlight, search a flight number, then you can pull that information right here. You don't have to exit, you just stay right here in Spotlight and you get all the info. Number five, you can get movie and cast info right here in Spotlight. I can search for a movie like The Creator, click it here. Not only do I have a summary and the website for the movie, but I can even see show times at theaters playing nearby. If I double click that, I can see what theaters and what times it's showing. And I even get a link to buy the tickets right here. Not only that, but you can search for cast and crew Click a cast member's name like John David Washington. You get a little bio, images, and if they have content elsewhere, you can actually click those links right here in Spotlight. The same is true on the iPhone or iPad. I could search for a movie or an actor. I have all the same info and even that playing in nearby theaters page. Number six, you probably know you could find weather information in Spotlight, but you can actually search for a specific city or location and on a certain day. Here on macOS Sonoma, I'm gonna search for weather Chicago, and I'll see that information right here in Spotlight. But then I can add more text like on Saturday, and I can see the weather in Chicago for Saturday. And yes, this works on iPhone and iPad as well. Just put that on Saturday or future date and you get that information right here on your mobile device. Number seven, you can do money conversions. Like if I did 18 USD to Euro, Spotlight will tell me what that is right here. I can do the same thing on my iPhone or iPad and it'll give me the conversion right there in Spotlight. Number eight, you can run shortcuts in Spotlight without ever opening shortcuts. If I wanna run the Apple Frame shortcut to make my screenshots look nice, I can run it right here. The same is true on the iPhone and iPad. I can search for one of my shortcuts, tap it, and the shortcut is already running here on my iPhone. Number nine, and this is for macOS only, you can actually start a timer on your Mac without ever opening the clock app or anything else. I'll open Spotlight and search for timer. Here you can see start timer as a shortcut. I'll double click that. It's asking for how long. I can choose seconds, minutes, or hours, and then click start. And now that timer started on my Mac. All right, this next one is macOS only, but you can actually search for specific kinds of search results before you even start typing. For instance, I'll open Spotlight and I'm gonna search for kind notes. Now this is only going to surface results from the notes application. If I search for AI48, which was an Apple Insider podcast show notes, you'll see that information right here and it's only surfacing notes. It also includes my bare notes, which is nice. Instead, I can search for kind PDF, maybe W9, and those results will come up just showing me PDF documents. I can also search for something like pages documents and only those results will come up. All right, number 11, and I do this the most often of any of these actions is just opening an app with Spotlight. A lot of times I find this to be the fastest way to open an app both on my iPhone and the Mac. If I don't have an app in my dock or I just don't wanna go there, I can quickly open Spotlight start typing the app name, and all of a sudden, that app is open. It's super fast whether I'm opening Final Cut or opening Bear, my notes app, Pixelmator, any app on your Mac, it's gonna open it super fast. Even utilities like Image Capture, which is a great application built into every Mac for importing photos and videos from your device, you can pull it up right here in Spotlight. I do the same thing on my phone very often. I can search for an app and immediately it's there at the top hit whether it's my banking app and I just wanna launch that, or weather apps that I only use during hurricane season. This way I don't have to have pages and pages of home screens with different apps, I can just search for it right here in Spotlight. 
right, those are lots of different ways to use Spotlight on your devices. So here are some customization options for both the Mac and the iPhone. Let's say on your Mac, you actually wanna move where the Spotlight search bar lives. Once it's on screen, I can click and drag it wherever I would like, and that's exactly where it will show up every time I do Command Space. If I wanna reset it to the original location, do Command Space to invoke it, and then click and hold on the magnifying glass in the menu bar, and it will snap back to its original location. Number 13, it's really useful to eliminate some things that Spotlight shows in search results. For instance, you might not want it to show website results. You might just wanna to go to your search engine for that. You can actually customize this both on your Mac and your iPhone. I'm gonna open the System Settings app here on my Mac, go to Siri and Spotlight. Then you can scroll down and you'll see all the different things it's searching for every time you invoke Spotlight. If I uncheck the Websites option here in System Settings, now when I search for something like the creator, the movie, you won't see any website results. It actually makes for a cleaner experience and you can still jump to Safari searching this by clicking under the Suggestions tab, which again, you can eliminate suggestions as well. I'll get to that in a second. You can do the same thing on iOS and iPadOS by going to the Settings app, going down to Siri and Search, and then scroll all the way down to Safari. Here you can see Show Content in Search, and I'm going to toggle that off. Now when I search in Spotlight here on my iPhone, I can search for the creator again, and I won't get results from Safari here in the search box. I can still tap here and search for the creator in my web browser, but it's not gonna have those Safari web results preloaded here in Siri. But you'll notice See App in Search is still toggled. That means if I wanna find this app, I can still search for Safari and Spotlight, and the app will still show up here at the top. Number 14, on your iPhone and iPad, you might want to remove previous searches from your history. Well, to do that, you could swipe down to go to search, and here at the bottom, you'll see recent searches. Now you can press clear right there, or you can actually just swipe right to left and clear individual searches from this menu. You can also turn this off entirely on your iPhone or iPad, go to settings, Siri and search, and then under the show recent section, untoggle that, and now when you go to Spotlight and Siri, you won't see those previous suggestions or previous searches. Number 15, you probably see a lot of times that Apple actually has their own suggestions amidst the search results. Well, you can turn that off too. For instance, every time I search for Bear, my favorite note app, I also see the Chicago Bears NFL football team come up, which I'm not really into sports ball, so I don't care to see. Well, here on the Mac, if I go to Siri and Spotlight in System Settings, then with these checkboxes, I can uncheck Siri Suggestions. This will remove some of those other results that I don't really care about. So if I search for Bear now, no Chicago Bears. Now, tip number 16, turning this off on your iPhone is a little different. For instance, if I search for Bears here on my iPhone, you'll see the Chicago Bears still show up under Suggestions. Well, if I go to the Settings app, Siri and Search, if I turn off Show Suggestions, Bears will still show up. What you actually need to toggle off is content from Apple, show in Spotlight. If I turn that toggle off, now when I search for Bear, no more Chicago Bears in the Suggestions box. All right, number 17. If you wanna remove an app from your Spotlight search entirely, you could do that too. Here on your iPhone, we'll go to a certain app. Maybe I don't wanna see the Amazon app every time I search in Spotlight, I'll toggle that off. And now when I search for Amazon, you won't see that main Amazon app come up in the top hit or search results. There are other Amazon apps that are there. Of course, I could hide those individually but that app won't show up anymore in search results. And you can see if you toggle off an app like that, the content from that app will no longer show up in Spotlight either automatically. Unfortunately, here in macOS Sonoma, there's only a checkbox for applications in general, so it doesn't seem you can turn on or off individual applications in Spotlight. If I'm wrong there, if there's some crazy terminal command that lets you do it, let me know down in the comments. And finally, tip number 18. If you wanna be able to search the folders on your Mac, but make it impossible for Spotlight to see particular folders, you can click Spotlight Privacy at the bottom, click the plus button, and now you can choose specific folders on your Mac, and when chosen, Spotlight will not index these folders at all whenever you're searching for anything. And so you can be sure these folders will be kept private. Click it and hit the minus button, and now that folder will be searchable by Spotlight. Those are 18 tips on how to use Spotlight on macOS, your iPhone, and iPad. Let me know if you learned something new down in the comments, or if there's more use cases that I didn't even list yet, I'd love to hear about those as well. And before you go, if you're interested in smart home, I have an entire 100% Apple HomeKit home. I give a full tour of that. You can check out that video above there. And if you have a new iPhone 15 Pro or Pro Max, I have two videos on the action button with lots of shortcuts you can download in the video description. I'll put that video right here. Before you go, don't forget to like, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. I'll catch you next time.